I'm Indre Viscontis, and today we're going to talk about what makes our brains so special. Have you heard people say things like, our brain is the most complex thing in the universe? I've also heard people say things like, there are more connections in your brain than there are stars in the known universe. Well, let's examine that for a second. There are about, oh, 86 billion neurons in your brain, give or take a few, depending on how many beers you've had. Then there are about a thousand synapses or potential connections that every neuron can make. So if we're trying to think about how many connections that is, that's about 86 trillion. Well, how many stars do we have in the universe? The closest estimate that I've seen is about 70 sextillion. That's seven times 10 to the 22. So that means for every synapse, there are about 700 million stars. That's a lot more stars than we have connections in our brains. But that doesn't mean that our brains aren't complex and interesting. After all, we're the ones that have built buildings that scrape the sky and computers that fit in our pockets and Arya Stark. So what is it that makes our brains so special? Well, first, let's figure out whether it's about size. Is size all that matters? You might have heard people throw around the number 100 billion as the number of neurons that we have in our brains. Well, there's one scientist, Susanna Herculano Huzel, who decided to actually test whether that was true. She and her lab developed a way of turning brains into a kind of soup and then sending them through a bunch of machines that could tell you exactly how many neurons there are. And she found that instead of 100 billion neurons, we have about 86 billion neurons. But the next question was, is that exceptional? Are our brains actually more full of neurons than they should be for a creature our size? In rodents, when you go from a smaller animal to a bigger animal, the neurons grow in size. So a mouse has smaller neurons than a rat, for example. It doesn't have more neurons necessarily. So it's like thinking about a baby. As a baby grows, its entire body grows. It doesn't grow more arms. It turns out in primates, we actually do grow more arms. Well, really, we grow more neurons as we go from a smaller brain to a bigger brain. That means that in a primate brain, the bigger the brain, the more densely packed the neurons, the more neurons we have. So if you create a model in which you have a certain expectation of a primate brain and how big it should be or how many neurons it should have given the body size of that particular primate, we get a number of about mm, 92 to 93 billion. So if the average human brain only has 86 billion neurons, we're actually slightly below average. So maybe it's not the actual number of neurons that we have that makes our brain so special. There's another ratio that's floating around the internet that you might have heard that is this idea that in fact for every neuron that we have in our brains, we have an entourage of 10 support cells. It turns out that number is way off. In fact, the number is closer to one to one. So what is it that makes our brain so special? Well, I like to think of it as three things. One, I do wanna go back to this idea that the support cells in our brain actually are important in terms of understanding why our brains are so great. And not because there's so many of them, but because they're actually involved in our thinking processes, in the way that our brains function. As neuroscientists, we're just now starting to realize that those glial cells are not just support cells, but they actually are active participants in things like memory formation or even ultimately complex decision making. The second thing that I think makes our brain special is the fact that none of our neurons are unemployed. In fact, I think it's kind of poetic that if by a certain time, maybe say around teenagehood, those neurons haven't found a meaningful job or made a meaningful connection, they die. So every neuron in your brain is somehow performing an important or particular function. But the third thing, I think, is what makes our brains particularly special. And it's not that we don't share this particular trait with all the other brains that are evolved in our universe, but rather we have had the time and the experience to really use it to the fullest, and that's neuroplasticity. The fact that our brains are biological organs that change over time and with experience. If your brain cells turned over the way, say, your skin cells do, you'd have a really big problem because you wouldn't be able to store information for multiple decades as that turnover happens. 
So your brain is different from the rest of your body in terms of cell turnover. Most of the time, you don't have new cell growth in your brain after it's fully developed. But there are two parts of your brain that do show the growth of new neurons, or what we call neurogenesis. And both of those parts in the human brain are involved in long-term memory formation. One is involved in skill and habit learning, and the other is involved in learning new facts and events for long periods of time. So how is it then that we are able to harness this plasticity, which is around even in tiny single-celled organisms, in a way that makes us so much more intelligent than many of the other animals in which we share the universe? That gets us back to Susanna herculano Huzel. And she pointed out that there are primates that are bigger than us, gorillas, for example. So why aren't we living in a planet of the apes? Well, it turns out that our brains, so full of neurons, are actually really hard to feed. They're gas guzzlers. About 20% of all the glucose that you consume goes to your brain and is used as fuel. But it only takes up about 2% of your body mass. Gorillas have to spend all of their time foraging and digesting and chewing their food because they are on a raw food diet. What makes us humans so special is the fact that we have figured out how to get many, many, many more calories with much less effort. We've discovered fire and we figured out how to cook. Once we figured out how to cook, that left all kinds of time in the day for us to harness our neuroplasticity and to be able to create new experiences for ourselves that actually fundamentally change the way our brains operate.